Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. Uh, as I was sitting there, I was recalling that about seven or eight months ago, I, start, I stood at this exact spot uh, at a time when there was really an extraordinary surge in cases in the northeastern part of the country, in New York City. And I said that if the virus was left to its own devices, it would cause a considerable degree of devastation, because that's what pandemic viruses do. It's a very powerful force, and you've heard about that and what we need to do about it from Dr. Birx. However, I also said, if some of you can remember, that there's an opposing force to that. And that opposing force is us, you and I, being able to do certain things like mitigation with public health measures, again, which was just mentioned by Dr. Birx. But there's another opposing force to that, and that's a vaccine. And historically, if you look at highly efficacious and effective vaccines, through the years, they've crushed formidable outbreaks, like smallpox, like polio, like measles. So in the next couple of minutes, let me tell you about what we have now and what's going to happen in the next few months. As you well know, Operation Warp Speed has been uh, supporting directly and indirectly six candidate vaccines, four of which are either in or completed phase three clinical trial. I want to briefly tell you about two of them because you have to be interested in this. It is extraordinarily impressive. Two of the vaccines, one by Moderna and one by the company Pfizer, have completed trials, and the, effic and the efficacious vaccine efficacy point is extraordinary. With regard to Pfizer, it was 95 percent efficacious, not only against disease that's just clinically recognizable disease, but severe disease. There were 10 cases of severe disease, one in the vaccine, nine in the placebo. For the Moderna trial, it was 94.5 percent efficacious, 11 severe events, zero in the vaccine, 11 in the placebo. For those of you not acquainted with the field of vaccinology, that is extraordinary. That is almost to the level of what we see with measles, which is 98 percent effective. So that's what we're dealing with. The question is, what about how that is going to be rolled out? I use the word efficacious. That means what happens in a clinical trial. The word effective means is what the ultimate impact of that vaccine is going to be on society. And the only way you can get an effective program is when people take the vaccine. And we're going to be talking to you about that. And I hear a lot now when we made these announcements this past Monday and then two Mondays ago about some reticence of people. Well, did you rush this? Was this too fast? Is it really safe? And is it really efficacious? The process of the speed did not compromise at all safety, nor did it compromise scientific integrity. It was a reflection of the extraordinary scientific advances in these types of vaccines, which allowed us to do things in months that actually took years before. So I really want to settle that concern that people have about that. What about the decision of the data? Who looked at the data? Was that some force that was maybe trying to put something over on you? No. It was actually an independent body of people who have no allegiance to anyone, not to the administration, not to me, not to the companies, that looked at the data and deemed it to be sound. Now that data will be examined very carefully by the FDA, who, together with a advisory committee, the Vaccine and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee, or VERPAC, are going to look at that before the FDA makes the decision about putting this forth for an emergency use authorization or ultimately for a license. So we need to put to rest any concept that this was rushed in an inappropriate way. This is really solid. Now, what does that mean for us? We now, as the Vice President said, are telling you that help is on the way, which has two aspects to it. It means that we need to actually double down on the public health measures as we're waiting for that help to come, which will be soon. We'll be getting vaccine doses into people at high priority at the end of December. We're not talking about shutting down the country. 
We're not talking about locking down. We're talking about intensifying the simple public health measures that we all talk about. Mask wearing, staping distance, avoiding congregate settings, doing things to the extent that we can outdoors versus indoors. If we do that, we'll be able to hold things off until the vaccine comes. Now, I've used that metaphor that the cavalry is on the way. If you're fighting a battle and the cavalry is on the way, you don't stop shooting. You keep going until the cavalry gets here, and then you might even want to continue fighting. And then finally, one other final thing about it. The very impressive efficacy, 94.5 and 95 percent of a vaccine, should motivate individual to realize that this is something you want to participate in. So we're going to be talking to you about it likely here in the future, about why it's important as these vaccine doses roll out, why we have to do two things, continue the public health measure and get vaccinated when the vaccine becomes available. Thank you. Thank you.